Yes, yes. Welcome to Trendsetters. It's your boy A. Rich, Akeem Richens, alongside my brother from another mother and father, DM3, Dave Myers, the yep. new Trendsetters 2.0. What's going on, brother? What's going on, man? It's been a little while, but we're, we're here. We're back. We ain't going nowhere. We're going to be here for a while. Camp started. We're good. We're good. Definitely. We we took a little hiatus, but it's, it's the dog days of summer. Summer. It's, it's dog days of summer. It's not too much to talk about unless you're going to talk about the same things over and over and over. And you know us on Trendsetters, we like to keep the content fresh. We like to keep the content new. And we want to keep our people that's, that's watching engaged at all times. Wouldn't you agree, Dave? I agree. We need to have some good content or else what's the point, right? We need to have some good stuff to talk about or what's the point, right? What's the point, man? What's the point? And, and, and why waste time? And why waste time? As we all know, training camp has arrived. We are finally here. The dog days of summer has looked like it's officially about to end. And we can get into our favorite time of the year, which is football season. More specifically and more important, our football team, the Buffalo Bills. As we all know, we've been hearing a lot about the process ever since... Sean McDermott and Brandon Bean came to one Bills drive. So what do you think about the process thus far in terms of how we're building our team, how we build in our culture? And even if you can compare the Buffalo Bills to Sean McDermott's last stops, prior stops before coming to Buffalo and how he structured teams there, what do you feel about the process? Well, I think when does, you know, when does the process end? I mean, it's always should be always ongoing, right? Unless you win a championship. So with that being said, you know, I I think we address the culture. I think the culture speaks for itself. You can tell on the field last year that the team has bought into the culture aspect of it. Um, As far as the product on the field, I think, I think that's a work in progress. We've got a ways to go Um, in the draft. Obviously we got our, Hopefully we got our franchise quarterback in Josh Allen. Um, that's yet to be determined. Obviously he's got a lot of work to do, but as far as offensively, we didn't really address a lot of the key positions. We didn't address wide receiver. You know, we signed Jeremy Curley, who's a, who's a slot guy. He's, he's a three on most teams. Um, we still have Shady, who's 30. We still have Ivory, who's 30. So I think we upgraded our backup running back, definitely. And, I mean, we still have Shady, so that's good. But as far as the offensive line, you know, all those key losses that we had, um, you know, with Wood retiring and Incognito going crazy and, and leaving the team, you know, we, we traded Cordy Glenn. So we brought in a couple, you know, castaways from some other teams in, in Newhouse and Bodine, but did we really address the key positions? And as far as defense, I think we've, we've done enough to be competitive defensively. You know, we, we signed Starr to a five-year deal. We signed Trent Murphy. You know, we drafted Harrison Phillips. We brought in Vontae Davis to replace EJ Gaines. Our secondary, as we know, is, is going to be lights out. But I, I'm, I'm a little skeptical as far as evaluation of offensive talent because we, we know that, you know, coming from Carolina, you know, McBean, you know, they didn't really come with a lot of offensive caliber recruiting, drafting, signing, you know, they don't have a legacy of doing that. So if there's a plan in place, hopefully that's part of the process is to address the offense next season because we have all that money to spend. I mean, hopefully we can win some games. I'm I'm sure defense, you know, stop the run and and cause some turnovers, ground and pound, but – um, I think the process is yet to be determined. I think Bean knows what he's doing. He has a plan. You know, he, he acquired all the draft picks. You know, he, he did what he said he was going to do there. He, he, he went after a quarterback. He went after his guy and got him. So you have to respect him for that. But I still think the jury is out on the process. Um, I think we still have a little ways to go before we can actually say, okay, these guys are doing what they said they were going to do from day one. What's, what's your take on it? I like that. I like I like that assessment. And I'm I'm a, I'm gonna go a little bit further. I believe that um Sean McDermott is is too much into the the Andy Reid philosophy. The Andy Reid philosophy works in terms of 
making the playoffs and having successful teams, but the Andy Reid philosophy hasn't been able to take himself and propel himself to the next step, which is Super Bowl rings and, 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 and titles. And what I mean by the Andy Reid philosophy, even if you look back at certain teams that Sean McDermott been on with the Philadelphia Eagles ever since the 90s when they made the championship well, that one year when they made the Super Bowl under Donovan McNabb and Terrell Owens. After Terrell Owens at receiver, it really wasn't much else after T.O. They had a little running game, but T.O. was mainly the focal point. After T.O., I believe they had guys like Freddie Mitchell and, and Todd Pinkston and guys that was all right, but not another guy to, to take him over the hump. And then when you look at the Carolina Panthers, the Carolina Panthers, they built a philosophy in, in winning in terms of having an elite defense trusting that defense. But again, when you looked at their receivers, we always wondered, uh, uh, Sean McDermott's whole tenure with the Carolina Panthers, where are the receiving core? Kelvin Benjamin got hurt the year he got hurt. They, they made the Super Bowl without Kelvin Benjamin. But before that, the, the Carolina Panthers receiving core was, was something less to be desired. Yeah. If if we if we definitely all could agree with that, and I believe he's taken he's taken that approach to uh, Buffalo in one Bills drive. So I would like to see Sean McDermott modernize that philosophy that's been getting him to the playoffs, so we can take that next step, and and that's the championship level. And I believe that we have to do something. Obviously, not this year, but for the 2019 season, we have to start investing heavily in offense and and get us get us a good foundation offensively because even if you look at Andy Reid's approach Andy Reid he realized something he said Travis Kels wasn't good enough Tyreek Hill was more of a a scat wide receiver he's a good player but he's more of a of a threat with the ball in his hands what did Andy Reid go out and do he went out and got Sammy Watkins he modernized that philosophy. So that's what I want to see from Sean McDermott. I like what we're doing, but I think we still have a long way to go. He has to modernize modernize his philosophy and get offensive weapons on the skill positions. Yeah, I think that they have to adapt and move on. They can't – just because he's a defensive-minded coach doesn't mean that we have to win games 10-3, 10-6, you know, 13-7. Right. I mean, he has to realize that you just spent a whole bunch – of time, energy, money, draft capital on the franchise right. quarterback. So you have right. to understand. I mean, look what the, look what Pittsburgh did. I mean, they didn't just say, okay, well, we got Big Ben, we're good. No, they got Antonio Brown. They brought in all those other receivers, and then they got Le'Veon Bell. So at some point, you have to address the wide receiver position and the running back position for the for long term. If these guys want to be around five, six, seven, ten years they have to address the offensive side of the ball. And maybe that's coming next year. Maybe that's part of the process. Maybe that's phase three, you know, year three. Maybe that's what they want to do. But the, th the thing that concerns me is that Brandon Bean was so quick to jump at the trade deadline last year to get a Kelvin Benjamin. And that's part of what I'm kind of torn on is, well, he looked to upgrade the position last year, but he didn't do anything in the offseason this year. So that's where I'm kind of torn with, well, can they absolutely, you know, can they judge offensive talent? So that's, I think, where that, that still needs to be seen. And with that being said, speaking of offense, um, I'm sure everybody's seen some of the stuff that Dable has been installing uh, so far with the quarterbacks, with the RPOs, and a, a lot of movement in the backfield. What is your take on bringing, I don't want to say a college-style scheme offensive scheme to the pro level um we saw the success the success that philly had last year with the rpo so what is your take on trying to install that knowing that we have a quarterback battle we have a, two really young quarterbacks one a rookie one a second year and one who's been in the league four years trying to learn that playbook and trying to also um, win out the quarterback competition and show and, and prove that they deserve to have the job. What, what's your, what's your take on that? I mean, I, you know what? I, at first, when I looked at the, uh, the whole run P uh, run plat pass option scheme, I always felt that it needed a specific type of player to run this scheme. I always felt that you need, I always felt like you needed some type of athlete 
uh, athletic ability at the quarterback position to run that type of offense. But last year, when I took a look at Carson Wentz, and obviously Carson Wentz is an athletically gifted guy, but Nick Foles is not as athletically gifted as Carson Wentz, and he ran that RPO system, that RPO scheme to to perfection, yeah. especially in the Super Bowl. So yeah. I, now I, I really opened up to it. I really, I really believe that it can be beneficial to uh, a quarterback if he's comfortable in the scheme, if he's comfortable not necessarily running out the pocket, but moving out the pocket uh, a little bit. I believe it could be a very a beneficial thing to our offense. And it also feels like, it seems like I'm saying this word over and over again, it also feels like we're, we're modern now. It always, almost feels like we're, we're, we're caught up to the rest of the NFL offenses now because that's what I'm seeing. That's what we're seeing a lot of. A lot of run play action schemes that's taken over and really revolutionizing this NFL. So I, I like it. And hopefully uh, Josh Allen is, is the best suited one for it. And I believe sooner than later, he's ready to take over that realm as being that RPO type quarterback. And um, that's we're installing in our offense. But as long as AJ McCarron and Nathan Peterman can run the offense, can hold that fort until Josh Allen is ready. I really like what we're doing with the schematics uh, offensively coming from our offensive coordinator. Yeah, I, I think that if you got a guy who was just in college last year, not saying that Nathan Peterman, he was in college two years ago, but if you watch anything that you've seen from training camp, yes, it's day three. Okay, fine. Pads just came on today. Fine. But he looks more comfortable – in the pocket with those RPOs than the other two guys do. Maybe it's just me. Right. Maybe, maybe, you know, maybe it's just me. And other thing I noticed is that McCarron and and Peterman seem like they're playing it safe. Now, I don't know if they think that they have nothing that they need to show. They don't need to throw the ball down the field. But if you watch any tape of camp, I mean, Josh Allen's throwing the ball all over the field. He's not, he's not afraid to take chances. Now, yeah, that could be good and that could be bad. You could have the Brett Favre mentality where he's just, you know, hoping that your receiver is going to make a play every single time. But mm-hmm. I think that out of the three, I think that Allen will be the most comfortable in the RPO because he did some of that in Wyoming. Not saying that Peterman can't do it or McCarron can't do it, but I feel like he just came from a system that's very similar, you know, a pro-style system that's very similar to that, and I think that he could be very successful. And just watching all the movement before the play by the offense. I mean, you got Charles Clay lined up right next to the quarterback in shotgun, and then he he splits out wide. I mean, you got wide receivers in the backfield. You got all kinds of movement. And it, the biggest thing I think that is going to separate our offense this year from last year is Dable knows how to get the matchups right. He knows how to get if you got Charles Clay going up against a linebacker. <clears throat> You got him all day. If you got Shady going up against the linebacker, you got him all <clears throat> all day. And if you saw today, I mean, they had Kelvin Benjamin line up in the slot, which I, I haven't seen that. I didn't see him do that last year. I didn't see him do it in Carolina. So he's trying to create these these mismatches off the line of scrimmage, which I think will be very successful. So that, that's my take on that. Nice, nice man. I, and 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 I have to I have to agree there. I have to agree there. Um. Obviously, we haven't seen no preseason games being played. We haven't seen no games being played. But from what we see, what's being implemented on the offensive side of the ball, it's it's a breath of fresh air to me, uh, me personally. I really like what's going on. I really like what Brian Dable is is putting together. Of course, we'll see what happens when the games start. We'll see if he can call the necessary plays on the necessary downs when the opportunity presents itself. But I definitely like what I see from that offense so far. And speaking of the rest of the rest of the offense, we we did, we dabbled in a little bit of uh, Brian uh, move the ball system. I like to call him Brian move the ball. I don't call him Dable. I call him Brian move the ball. <laughs> so a little bit. Brian, yeah, definitely, definitely. So Shady McCoy, man, Shady McCoy, how are are you comfortable with what's going on in terms of? What's happening with Shady McCoy outside of football? Do you think we're going to get some news 
during the season where it's just going to hit us and affect us, where you see out of nowhere, you wake up one morning and check your phone and McCoy's out for eight games yeah. uh, for the next eight games of the season. That concerns me. I don't even know if I want to draft Shady McCoy in my franchise league anymore. I don't know. How, I don't even know how to feel about that. Give me a take on, on uh, <laughs> Shady McCoy and the rest of our running backs on the team. If you feel that any one of them could step up, if somehow Shady McCoy doesn't play out the full season. Well, I, I think I got a couple takes because in, in this is, I'm going to sound like a homer here because everybody knows how I feel about LaShawn McCoy. He's been, I, I don't, I don't have favorites on the bills too often, but he's, he's been my favorite player probably since Eric Moltz. So my take on it is he has a history, right? I'm not saying he's, he, he's a bad guy. Okay, I'm not saying he's a great guy, but I think a lot of the stuff that came up with his ex-girlfriend, ex-fiance, whatever she was, I think, you know, I wasn't there, you know, so I don't, I don't, I don't know. I'm just going off of everything I've seen and read, but <clears throat> the stuff about his, about his son, I don't, I don't buy any of that because, yeah, I know social media can, can be very deceitful, but a lot of the stuff that he's posted, it looks like he genuinely is a good father, Um and his ex actually came out and said that th this is this is crazy. There's no signs of this. But as far as the, the the pro side of it, the NFL side of it, I think the Bills are looking at all their options. I mean, they brought in Orleans Darqua for for a tryout. You know, so they I don't know why. To... I don't know why. I don't know why they brought him. I, I, I why yeah. him? I, I, don't, I was I more don't... comfortable with Brandon Oliver. I was more comfortable with Brandon Oliver, not Darqua. No disrespect to Darqua. No, I mean, I mean, you know, I mean. The only thing they can do at this point is I, I'm not I'm not comfortable with Chris Ivory carrying the rock 25 times a game. I think that he's serviceable. You want to bring him in, you know, goal line situations. You want to bring him in third and ones. I think he's going to be much more effective than Tolbert was. But you have to if something happens to Shady, if he's gone four games, six games, two games, whatever it is, you have to have some sort of plan because behind Ivory you got Marcus Murphy, you know, which okay, he, he, he showed signs a little bit. He's kind of unproven, small sample size. You got Travaris Cadet, you know, he's good. I think a better receiver out of the backfield. And you got Taiwan Jones, who had one or two good plays last year. So I think if, if the Bills weren't concerned on the back burner part of it, they wouldn't have brought in Darkwa for, for a visit. You know, I mean, there's still some guys out there. Plus, we still have camp. There's going to be camp casualties. There's going to be roster cuts leading into preseason. So – the, the thing that is positive, I think, about this so far is that we haven't heard anything in a while. Now, I know it's an investigation. It's ongoing. But we haven't – it's been a while. We haven't heard anything. Right. The, la the last little snippets or whatever that have come out was all stuff that his ex was – she was backtracking. Like, you know, the, no, that didn't happen. I, I, that didn't happen. No, that didn't happen. Right. So she – you know, the story seems to be changing and evolving um, – into something else. So I guess we just have to cross our fingers because if we miss him for four to six games, we're going to, we're going to be in trouble. I think especially installing a new offense and getting this offensive line in shape, you know, with a new quarterback, because if you're a new quarterback, you want to have Shady McCoy behind you because he's, he's going to make your offensive line look a lot better, a hell of a lot better than they, than they are. If, if they're, if they're struggling and he's going to help either Josh Allen, who's a rookie and Nathan Peterman, who's the second year and a McCarron, who's they're all in a new offense. So that's, that's, that's my spin on it. I mean, I, I don't know right. if you have a different take on it and how you feel about how it's going to progress leading up to the preseason, but let's just cross our fingers at this point. I mean, what else can we do? Exactly, man. I, 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 I agree a hundred percent. Once again, trendsetters, a rich, Akeem Richens, DM three, Mr. Dave Meyer himself giving you live content. I mean, I mean, I, I, I have to agree with you here. I have to agree with you and, and, and your whole assessment with how this whole uh, shady McCoy situation is, is, it has come about. But I want to go and talk about the coaches and, and, and get your take and get your, get your hypothesis on, on, on certain things in terms of where we are as an organization. Are we, because it seems that it's a lot of confusion. I know we made the playoffs. We was we was was we supposed to make the playoffs? Probably not. Did we sneak in? Probably so. Yeah. But nevertheless, 
we made the playoffs. Oh, we snuck in. But now that we now that we've made the playoffs, is this is this a rebuild still? Do we do we ignore the fact that we made the playoffs and be like, okay, we made the playoffs, but that was last season. We're still in rebuild mode because we're the Buffalo Bills. Or are you looking at that playoff berth like, listen, we're no longer in rebuild mode. We just made the playoffs. We are a contending team, and we need to continue to contend from here on out. Otherwise, it's it's failure for our organization and failure for Coach Sean McDermott. I mean. You want you want real talk? I'll, I'll give you real talk. Real because, talk. Well, we on trendsetters. We not on these other. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll, we not I'll, on I'll these other. You, I'll give you real talk. You know, thirty-five year Bills fan. I'll give you real talk. Okay, so I've seen all these other people coming on here saying that we're gonna make the playoffs. Okay, I, I don't I don't buy that. Okay, and the reason why I don't buy that is because last year we snuck in, we backdoored that bitch last year. Okay, we snuck in last year. And I, and I think this year, yeah, to answer your question, are we, are we rebuilding? I wouldn't say it's a full-blown rebuild, but we, we are not the New England Patriots, okay? We, we just aren't. We're, we're, we're not the New England Patriots. We're not some of these other teams like the Philadelphia Eagles, the Los Angeles Rams. We're, we're not those teams. Can we make the playoffs? Yes. You, you damn believe we can make the playoffs. We did last year when people said, ah, tanking 4-12, and 12, you know, they're, they're not going to do right. shit. But we, we did address the defensive side of the ball, which is impressive, okay? So they have enough pieces, I think, on defense to keep us, you know, competitive in a lot of games. Now, if we find a quarterback that comes in and can lead this team, fine. If we find a quarterback that can just manage the offense, fine. But I'm not going to sit here today and tell you that I think that we are a playoff team. Can we make the playoffs? Yes. Do we need to get some bounces? Yes. Do we need to get the turnovers like last year? Absolutely. But I can't sit here and tell you that we're going to go 10 and 6, 11 and 5, and New England better watch out. You know, I, I'm being real. Like right. next year, if, if, if we're having the same conversation next year, then we go back to our previous conversation about the process. Because right. I think that they're – they're trying to take the right steps year after year to get us to where we need to be. And I think that this year needs to be put Josh Allen in first game of the season and let him figure out if that's our franchise quarterback, because you're, you're dicking around with AJ McCarron. You're dicking around with Nate Peterman. You just blew all this draft capital. You traded away all these players to get Josh Allen, right? So let him play. Let's see what he's got. And if he takes, if he takes his lumps, he takes his lumps. If he throws five picks in a game, let him throw five picks in a game. He's going to learn from it. Carson Wentz did the same thing, right? And if you not, – not to go too long on this, but if you look at the Philadelphia Eagles mold, and a lot of other people have already made this assessment and they've already married the two together, they had Carson Wentz and they had one good receiver, a decent running game, and they went seven and nine. So what's to say that we can't do the same thing? We go seven and nine – Next year, we add weapons on offense, and we just kick the shit out of everybody next year. We already have defense in place. We, all, we have all our draft picks next year. We got close to 70 million cap space. So this year needs to be a year where we figure out what quarterback we have, how we're going to run the offense, let the defense keep us in games, and go from there. And that's all I got. <laughs> That's all I hey, got on that. Hey, I like it. I like it. Now you talking about we're talking about the defense a lot lately. Let's touch on the defense a little bit. We're we've been we've been uh having pictures, throwing out pictures on IG, Facebook, on our defense, you know, pro football focus. They always showing the rankings on defense. We know we got, uh, have had a great uh, season in the secondary last year with Davis White, Micah Hyde, Jordan Poyer. And even though, even though I really like those guys, I'm not sold. Sway me, correct me if I'm wrong. Could tell, let me know, hey, Rich, you're bugging out. These guys are elite. I seen these guys come out of nowhere one year. Tredavious White is a rookie. I give him that. He had a hell of a rookie season. You know, with rookies, there are such things as sophomore slumps. Jordan Poyer was like, who is Jordan Poyer this time last year? Who the hell is that? We need another safety. And now this year, Jordan Poyer, one of the best safeties in the league. 
And then we have Micah Hyde, who is a Swiss Army knife, who was looked at as pretty good in most of, multiple spots, but not great at any one spot. Now, you look at it a year later, and it seems like the Buffalo Bills secondary is one of the best in football. Do you really believe our secondary is the best in football, or do you feel like, kind of like myself, like, I love the season we have, but you got to go out there and do it again because you don't have enough games under your belt to consider yourself elite yet. And that's just how I feel about the secondary. I mean, I, I, I feel you on most of that, but – are they the Jacksonville Jaguars? No, I think they have the best secondary in the NFL. And I, I, I don't even think it's close. I mean, Jacksonville secondary is ridiculous. You know, I mean, but right. the reason to be excited is because they only played 16 games together, right? So now they have 16 games together. They have this whole off season. They have this whole training camp preseason to do it again. Now, should we be concerned with the sophomore slump? Absolutely with Tredavious White. Absolutely. But if you, if you watch any of Sean McDermott's press conference yesterday, he said, somebody asked him the same question. Is Tredavious going to have a sophomore slump? And he said, the way this guy works, there's no way. There's no way. Cause he wants to improve everything. And as far as Jordan Poyer goes, he wasn't bad with the Browns. He wasn't bad. And, and th these guys might all be system guys. They just might be the right pieces that fit McDermott's vision for his secondary. And maybe that's why it works. Now, Micah Hyde, when he was with green Bay, he played some safety, he played corner, you know, he, he did, he did everything. He played, he played linebacker. He did all that right. stuff and de depending on what package they were in, but what makes him so important is he's just playing safety. Now that's all he's doing. Hey, Micah Hyde, right. your safety on this side, Jordan's going to be on that side. That's it. That's what you're doing. He doesn't have to be worried about, being worked in as a cornerback. He doesn't have to worry, be worried about where he's at on the field. He He's playing safety. And as far as Tredavious White, I think bringing Vontae Davis in is going to push him a little bit. He's going to he, – I mean, the guy's 30. He's got experience. Maybe that's going to help him. Hey, it's your second year. This is what you need to do. You need to keep grinding. But I, I think if you look at McDermott's secondary in Carolina, it was a system, right? Who the hell is Josh Norman? before McDermott got a hold of him. The guy, guy was a late-round draft pick, and McDermott made – I still feel like McDermott made Josh Norman who he is in the system that he was playing. So now right. you, bring in, you bring in Tremaine Edmonds and you bring in Milano, so now all these guys have to worry about is keeping the ball in front of them, right, because you got more athletic linebackers in front of them. So do I think that they're the best secondary in the league? No, but definitely top five. I mean, they're definitely top five. And I'm not a stat guy, you know – you know, I love PFF too, but if you look at, I mean, they check all the boxes and that's not just because our defense was on the field a shit ton of time and teams figured out they're going to run on us. So, you know, when they throw, we're ready. No, we had a really good year in the secondary and they, they got all those turnovers and it wasn't just because we played against bad quarterbacks. I mean, they made Matt Ryan look not good as far as I'm concerned, but that that's just one game. But I, right. I think I think they're the real deal. I don't think they're the best. I think they're one of the best because you still have to pass Jacksonville, you know, right. there. But I, I definitely think that they they are legit in they're not going to have a slump, a sophomore slump as a unit together because of the system. It's McDermott and Leslie Frazier's system, and I think that, that, that works. So Nice, man. Nice. I like it. I like it. We talk about uh, coming to pay players. We talk about in terms of paying players. We it seems as if Brandon Bean, Sean McDermott is real frugal on the offensive side of the ball. Now I'm just trying to trying to get your thought process. I don't know if you know the answer, but maybe you can lead us to the direction of what the answer could be. Why is it? Why does it seem that we're real frugal on the offensive side of the ball? Mind you, Sean McDermott is a defensive guy. So me, my thought process behind it is if, if I'm a defensive guy and my expertise is on that side of the ball, I'm going to want to play – I'm going to want to pay elite offensive guys so I don't necessarily right. have to worry about this side of the ball as much because this is not my expertise. So I'm going to pay whatever I got to pay to make this side of the ball click. 
It seems as if not only Sean McDermott is not an expert on the offensive side of the ball, but you're co- you combining that with being frugal with your money at the same time on the offensive side of the ball, whereas you're you're not hesitant to pay a star Latoule a fifty million dollar contract, and you're not hesitant to pay. Uh, a Trent Murphy who was coming off an injury who also had was suspended for abusing the substance abuse policy. Why are you not afraid to pay those guys, but you're being frugal on the side of the ball where you don't have any expertise in? Can you elaborate on that for me a, a, a little bit? Or I mean, why you think I, that I think we, be? yeah, I mean, we, we touched on it a little bit earlier when we were talking about, you know, how we improve, we went heavy defense draft. We went heavy defense free agency besides Josh Allen. Um, you, I mean, one, one can say that maybe there just wasn't the options that they wanted in free agency this year. So that's why they didn't spend the money. I mean, we don't have a ton of cap space. I think after Josh Allen's contract, we only have like $10 million right now. So right. one, I mean, I mean, one, one can say that, you know, the Star Latula contract was, was, I thought was a bit excessive. Um, he came off a down year last year. Now, was he one of the best free agents at his position? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the one thing about the Trent Murphy contract is there's an option. There's an opt out after one year. So if he can't come back from the injury, if he doesn't perform, you know, like they want, or if they just don't think that he's the right fit, they can cut him and there. There's no caps casualty. Um, but, I mean, Ivory's contract wasn't bad. You know, I mean, he got more than right. Tolbert did, but he's a better back. But, right. you know, I mean, if you look at the wide receivers that are available now, I mean, you got all the veterans who are age 30-plus. Are you going to give those guys $6 million? Besides Des Bryant, right. I mean, there's really there was really no good, you know, free agents left after. I mean, Sammy completely just skyrocketed, you know, Right, the market. The market for wide receivers. You know, you see, like, the Terrell Priors, what they're getting and, and stuff like that. And, you know, I mean, was there options available? I think absolutely. And I was the first one that complained that we didn't have, you know, receivers on this team. But the more you think about it, maybe maybe we have the ones that we want. I mean, that's, you know, you got the Austin Pros, You got the Ray Ray McClouds. You know, you got the Robert Fosters. You got the Brandon Rileys. I mean – We'll have to just wait and see. Now, my question is if next year we don't address and open the wallet and spend that damn money on offense, because I don't know what else we need to do on defense next year unless Tremaine Edmonds doesn't work out and we don't re-sign Vontae Davis and, and Starr's not good and, you know, Jerry's not good and Shaq's gone. And, I mean, what, what else do we need to do on defense next year? So we have that money to spend on offense. Go and find – Shady's replacement if you don't draft him. Go and sign a wide receiver. There's going to be fr- free agent wide receivers next year. It's a, And it's a top-heavy draft, too, for wide receivers. So if they don't spend their money next year, then we can start saying that they're extremely frugal. Because what are you doing with all that money? It's just sitting there. And you know that Pagula wants to spend it. He has never shown one notion of not opening up his wallet for anything. So I don't know if it's McDermott. I don't know if it's Bean. Um <clears throat> Because, you know, coming from Carolina, yes, they didn't go after the big-name wide receivers, but they had Cam, right? They found Cam. I'm not saying Bean did that, but he was there when they found Cam, right? You know, they right. had the D'Angelo Williams. You know, they, they had they had decent decent running game. So uh-huh. I think the jury is out, and that's what I alluded to earlier as far as can these guys actually judge the offensive side of the ball, and that's going to be determined next year. Well – Possibly this year with Josh Allen, see how that goes next year um, with all the money that we have. I mean, shit, go sign OBJ next year. Give him $15 million. Who cares? Wow. Right. You, you wouldn't take OBJ in a heartbeat? I would love I – would, I, hey, I would love – me personally would love OBJ. I would be shocked as hell if we were to spend the money on him, but I would love it. I would love yeah, it. I, I, and I know this is a pipe dream, but give him Sammy's money. Three years, forty-eight million. Why the hell not? You, you, you're not going to re-sign Kelvin Benjamin because he's going to want Sammy money, and right, you can't give him that. You know, you can't give him sixteen million. 
You know, right. I mean, so, I mean, you, you got to spend the money. Either draft the running back or you got to sign somebody. I, I mean, I'm sure there's going to be options because we ain't signing Le'Veon Bell. That ain't going to happen. So people need to stop talking about that. But, right, you know, they have to open the, the wallet on offense. You know, definitely. Next year. I definitely think we got to open up uh, the wallet on offense, especially we'll see what happens this year. I think uh, probably a, a high draft pick out receiver maybe is maybe necessary. Uh, uh, a free agent receiver maybe necessary as well. We'll 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 definitely <clears throat> we'll definitely uh, see what happens uh, this year. Maybe maybe we're looking for our own version of Stefan Diggs and 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 Adam Thal- Thalian. Th- uh, Thalian. Maybe we can find them this year something that Minnesota did. Minnesota, part of the reason Minnesota is very successful right now is because they found receivers, kind of like what we're doing. Yeah. Uh, Adam Thelen, Stephon Diggs, they wasn't high draft picks. They wasn't uh, high profile guys, but they turned themselves into stars in this NFL. And because they wasn't high profile guys, because they wasn't high, uh, high uh, picks in the draft, they're not getting paid as elite receivers. Right. So they're not getting paid as elite receivers. They have money to spend elsewhere right. while their re- elite receivers under an average receiver contract is, right. is playing about. So maybe we can find our own version of what the Minnesota Vikings have. But if not, we definitely have to spend that money on receivers and we definitely have to uh, uh, spend some draft capital on either uh, the running back position and or the offensive line position. I believe the offensive line cannot be overlooked. Uh, you have to protect your franchise quarterback. We've seen what happened in Indianapolis with Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck missed a whole damn year because he didn't have the proper protection uh, in front of him. And I think that we're going to really look at our offensive line this year and see what adjustment has to be made as well. I believe 2019 with over $70 million in cash space, some of that money uh, should be and could be invested in that offensive line as well. Agreed. All right, you want to do quick hits real quick? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do all it. Right, so before we get all out of you here. guys out there that don't know what quick hits is, it's something I came up with, and Akeem's, I think Akeem's on board. Take with all it. Take, take, go ahead. Go ahead. Take all the credit for it. Shit. <laughs> something Dave came up with. <laughs> yeah. No. All right, so me and Akeem, Akeem and I came up with something called quick hits. Um, it's something that just real quick, uh, questions and answers. We're not going to elaborate on too much. We're just going to ask each other some questions and we're going to, we're going to just gun to head answers and we're going to go. All right. So I'm gonna go first. I got one for you. All right. Who's going to win more games, the bills, the jets or the dolphins. Real talk. I, I mean, I, I, I got to be a homer here. It's trend, so I got to be a homer to the Bills. I got to be a homer to say the Bills, but I'm not going to lie to you. I really like – I hate to say it. I really like what the New York Jets has done, man. I really like what they're doing. I think they have a boatload of money with us, just like us next year, and I believe yeah. they had they, they did some things. Tremaine Johnson on defense, Sam Donald. I really like what they did. And being a 5-11 and 11 team last year, they was very, very competitive, and I think they got better, and I don't think they lost anybody to speak about. So while I do think we're going to have the best record, I do want to keep a lookout for the Jets as well. Yeah, I think their secondary is underrated too. So they have a really good secondary too. So, all right, you got a question for me? Yeah, I got a question for you. What was Sammy Watkins' thought process cutting his hair before camp? Do you think this is the new Sammy Watkins? Do you think this is this is turning into beast mode Sammy Watkins? Or what, this was one of those things where, you know what, I just want to cut my hair. I'm getting older. I'm getting older in life. Let me just cut my hair. You talking, you about, about, you talking about reptile Sammy Watkins who thinks that the, the earth is flat? That guy? Yeah. You know that guy? <laughs> Yes, that guy, that guy. I think he just wanted to change it up. I mean, it, it's not going to affect him at all. I think he just the, the look was over. Maybe he just wanted to try something fresh. But that dude's a character, man. I don't, I don't know what's going through his head, twenty four seven. But some of the shit that he comes out with, oh my god, dude! Like, right. I don't know if he, I don't know if he's doing it for publicity. If he wants people to talk about him or what, but get on the field. I mean, he looks good in camp. I'm not going to lie. He, he looks, he looks he like he Sammy does. Watkins of, of. His rookie Clemson. year with the Bills. But, yeah, he, he, looks, he looks pretty like legit. Um, right. He's got Mahomes, so he's going to get the ball. So, yeah, I think, you know, whatever. Sammy got rid of the dreads. It's cool. You know, short hair. Nice. You know, it's all good. Nice. 
All right, I got, got one for me. I got another one for you. How many quarterbacks are the Bills going to carry into the regular season? All three? What do you think? That's an excellent question. I believe if Nate Peterman beats out A.J. McCarron, we keep two quarterbacks and see if we can find a, 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 another suitor for A.J. McCarron for a late-round pick. If A.J. McCarron beats out Nate Peterman, I believe we keep all three. I think we keep all three quarterbacks, if yeah. that makes sense. I, 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 I just I think the on, the, on the trade market, even though A.J. McCarron would lose the quarterback battle, his name has more appeal in the market. So I believe that yeah. it, it, it could possibly happen in, uh, in that order. Yeah, I, I've, and it's simply based. I, I feel the same way. I think it's simply based off of experience at this point. If 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 Peterman wins the the competition, you know, I I think you're right. I think AJ. You, I don't know why you keep him. I mean, you know, you, you have your franchise sitting behind. So what do you do? You make AJ number two, or you make AJ number three? Like what do you like? What do you do? Like if if Nate wins the competition. And so then you have to decide who the competition is for the backup quarterback, right? It has to be Josh yeah. Allen. Whoever the number one is, to. Josh Allen, if he doesn't start from day one, he has to be number two. He has to be. Right. He has to be number right. two getting the reps. He, ha he has to be. So I agree with you. Right. All right, what else you got? Definitely. Definitely. Hey, well, I, got, I got something else for you. I've been seeing a lot of, of – who is the best quarterback in the NFL? And believe it or not, a lot of people, a lot of people would pick Aaron Rodgers over Tom Brady as the best quarterback in the NFL. And as much as I despise Tom Brady, as much as I hate Tom Brady, how can anyone pick anybody else over Tom Brady? How? I mean, I don't know how you feel, who you feel is better, but I, I believe durability plays a part in yeah. – what a player is and Aaron Rodgers is if he's not hurt every year he's hurt every other year how can people out there possibly believe Aaron Rodgers is better than Tom Brady if you look at all right there's there's multiple ways to look at this right when Aaron Rodgers went down last year he just basically tore the heart out of the Packers fans right I mean that that was it not saying that if Brady went down that wouldn't happen because you you know you got Brian Hoyer back there but whatever that means, I, I agree. I, I agree to an extent because I'm kind of an, I, I like Aaron Rodgers because I feel like he's, he's extremely clutch. Not that Tom Brady's not, but if you're, if you're just one of those people that, that opens up, you know, a webpage and you just look at stats, Aaron Rodgers, ridiculous. Like he, the dude throws like what five picks a year. Not that Brady doesn't cause he's pretty close, but I have to agree with you. I think, and, and it, it kills me to say this because I, I just, I hate Tom Brady, but he's, With a uh, the, dude, With a the dude, he does nothing but perform. I mean, the only other person that I would throw in this category, and it's a dude that gets no respect for, for whatever reason, is Drew Brees. Drew Brees is ridiculous. He's going to be the all-time leading passer in yards this season, halfway through the season, you know. Yes, he's only got one ring, but how many rings does Aaron Rodgers have? One. One? I mean, got yeah, one. Tom Brady's got five, but, I mean, you have to be crazy to not say that he's not – that Tom Brady's not number one. I mean, just look at look at everything he does. If he if – he, when he retires, that's what – what is everybody looking forward to? Tom Brady re to retire so that the Patriots aren't as good. If Aaron Rodgers retires, they'll probably have a contingency plan. Not that it's going to be that easy, but – I mean, it's it's Tom Brady. I, I, I think definitely it's Tom Brady, for sure. I, I'm with you on that. As painful Amen. as that shit is to come out of my as mouth. As painful as it is. As painful as it is. Couldn't agree more, man. All but right, yeah, I got, man. I got one more for you. Definitely. All right. So, should the Bills add one more veteran player, any position, before... You know, I guess, I guess now, when I came up with this, it was a couple of days ago. But now, before, you know, camp gets too heavy, we get into preseason. What do you think? Should they add a vet at any position? 
Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take it a, a, a step further. I believe they should add two vets, one vet on each side of the ball. I believe what, that um. What position? I, I, I see, I, well, see, I seen Keenan uh, the Keenan Robinson, uh, the linebacker. I seen his his the, the late ad with him. I, I'll tell you right now, that's a highly under 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 the radar sign. That that guy is pretty good. He's gonna be, he's gonna be pretty good. Go ahead. I like that signing. I like the signing. I see the DC we signed, but besides them, one one uh, one vet on defense I would like to see is we don't never have enough cornerbacks. You never have enough cornerbacks at our position at the cornerback position. Sean McDermott thrives on 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 six on being successful in the secondary, and we just don't know. We assume that certain guys we have is going to come in and and play to the scheme and play as the scheme fits because we saw it last year with EJ Gaines coming over from the Rams to the Bills. EJ Gaines was one of the worst cornerbacks coming over from the Rams before he got to Buffalo last year. He came out, he had a hell of a season. So because that happened, now the now us fans, we assume it's just supposed to happen again and we're just supposed to plug and play again with Vontae right. Davis, with Philip Gaines. And I'm just not sure. I'm not sold on those guys yet. Philip Gaines yeah. struggled with the Kansas City Chiefs while he was out there. He was picked on a lot. I, I know we picked on him several times when we played yeah. the Kansas City Chiefs. Vontae Davis hasn't been the Vontae Davis I'm accustomed to seeing in the last two or three seasons. So I would definitely add a veteran cornerback if one is out there uh, when it comes time to training camp cuts on on the defensive side of the ball and on the offensive side of the ball, again, we can go receiver, we can go running back, or we could go offensive line. I think any one of those positions uh, makes sense as a, as a veteran, especially along the offensive line. I mean, come on, we lost Eric Wood. We lost Cordy Glenn. We lost Richie Incognito. We have... Uh, our best offensive lineman right now, maybe a second rear player in Deion Dawkins. Yeah. The other guys are unknowns. Jordan Mills was pretty good the year before last, but we don't know what he's going to bring to the table this year. We have Bordine. We don't know what Bordine coming over from Cincinnati is going to bring. We don't know what Newhouse is going to bring coming from Oakland. We don't know what Ryan Groy is going to bring now. He's not, he's not a surprise no more. He's expected right. now. So right. we don't know what these guys are going to bring. So I would love to add another veteran uh, along the offensive line in, in terms of bringing somebody on the offensive side of the ball. Don't forget about John Miller. That dude's beasting out. Have you seen him lately? i seen him. i seen him. Dude. Shout out to Rico. i seen, I seen Rico's video. He spoke about John Miller a lot. Dude. I'm looking for a, a successful season for John Miller. But, yeah, that again, dude, that I don't dude, know for sure. He's, he's taking his spot back. He, he, oh, he's trying. He's beasting out. That dude right. looks like a freaking truck, man. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mess with him. No, he, he's, he's, he's <laughs> beasting hope. out, man. He's beasting he out. He was definitely a road grader. He was definitely a road grader. Hopefully he could continue to yeah. open up some holes, man, and, and, and give, our, give our, our offensive line a, a, a surprise. That yeah. a lot of us would be will be will be excited to see. Yeah, I mean, I, I I agree with you. I think a corner would be nice. I think another linebacker. You know, we just brought in Keenan Robinson, but I, I think bring another one in. Why not? I mean, you got a second year guy in Milano. You got a, a rookie in Edmonds. You know, bring some depth in. Let them push. You know, bring some veterans and let them push those young guys. You know, they can only get better, right? So right. What else? What else you got? You got any other questions before we get out of here? Uh, any more things? Nah, man. I think we uh, f for our first time back off our hiatus, man. I think we, I think we did a, I think we did a, a fairly good job, man. You know, it's it's going to get better time in and time out. Each segment, each live, each episode is going to get better from trendsetters. I'm just happy to be back. I'm happy That's to right. be back doing it with my brother. And right. it's it's only it's only the beginning, man. It's definitely only the beginning. Anything before we get out of here? Uh, I'm good. I mean, shout out to uh, to Bobby B for our logo. You guys will see it when the video pops. So other than that, mm -hmm. I'm good, man. We'll we'll be back soon. We're gonna drop these all throughout the season. Um, we're gonna we're gonna keep it going, man. And we'll have more stuff to talk about because camp is going, pads are on. So let's get it. Definitely, man. Definitely. Once again, you're in tune to Trendsetters with your boy A Rich. 
Akeem Richens, my brother from another mother and father, DM3, Mr. Dave Myers himself. If you don't know us, get to know us. Bills Fanatics, until next time. We out.